What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Civilization 6 as Australia. It's it's another episode, another another episode of this weirdly non-aggressive series. Um, Civ 6 seems to be like that. I, I don't don't really get when well, I say that if you go up one more difficulty it becomes very aggressive, but yeah, it's a very weird balance. <laughs> we walk the line very carefully. Um, but so far we're doing okay. I mean, we're I'm sure we'll do something at some point that involves another sieve. But so far, we're just, just minding our own business and getting on, doing our stuff. It's all going well. Got the territory we wanted. Yeah, it, it could be worse, right? It could be, could be a whole lot worse. Right, we have a lot of choices here. Um, one governor title, two envoys, fishing boats receive one production. That's quite nice. Um, I might go with that, actually. Production to all wonders. Are we building a wonder right now? I feel like we are for some reason. We are building the Taj Mahal. Might be worth going... Sticking with this one then. I mean, by the time it's done, it won't make much difference. But oh well. We'll, we'll give it a go. And down here, what should we get? Oh, shipyard available. Wouldn't be a bad shout. Um, we still need that diplomatic quarter. Right, what does it do again? I'm sure check if I need to... Maybe put it somewhere else. Civilization receives one diplomatic favor for each delegation or embassy. Okay, one envoy if built next to the city center. Okay, I mean, for one envoy, I don't know if that's worth it. I don't even know. Is this one the city center? Government, pl oh no, city center, sorry. That's that's different, isn't it? I'm being stupid, sorry. No, yeah, okay. Well, I don't know if it's worth it for one envoy, but... Yeah, I mean, this tile's not great, so we'll just stick it here. That's absolutely fine. Any good policies? Still happy with all the science and culture we're getting here. We're saving a lot of gold here. We're getting a lot of gold here. Ooh, that one's nice. 24 gold, 6 faith, and then here's 9 science. We could still swap that, so we'd drop 6 culture, but gain 3 more science if I put that one in. Um, This one is very nice. 24 gold. Um, obviously, it's better than the 13 here, but... Again, I don't want to sacrifice this science I'm getting at the moment. But once we get our next government type... We could definitely consider that. We are now going to get another 134 gold and two more envoys, which is very useful. Um, we are the suzerain in some of these cities. I'll try and take this one back. And I don't know, let's go Bologna, get that first sort of bonus. Science, and let's try and get um, Preslav if we can. We have a lot of envoys this turn, oh my goodness. Okay, well, there we go. Did we meet everyone now? Yes, we've met everyone. And most of them like us, um, which is good. You're not just... Wait, why won't it let me put this on Explore? I, I have no idea. Faster movement. There you go. Uh, oh, it's already moved this turn. I think that's why. We've actually boosted these. Wh when did that happen? I thought we hadn't boosted anything a minute ago. Things have obviously changed. <laughs> In we go. Right, well, we'll go with this one. Um, let's level it out. Scientific theory. The Oxford University. A good wonder. Food from plantations up as well. We have a few of those, so that seems useful. Intelligence agency. I feel like we should go for those because, yeah, we need spies and I just haven't built any yet. Alright, this city, I have no idea. You are not a great. <laughs> you're not great, are you? You're not doing, I don't know, not really any good bonuses. I saw a plus, a harbor plus five. That's quite tempting. We do need some. An industrial zone? Why is there not like a food district? Like a farm district? Gives you more f food. That would be great. Um, I have, yeah, I have literally no idea here. Um, you know, we might just go with that harbour. We can't get a commercial hub that's anywhere near as good. The industrial zone is the other tempting one, just to get some more production. But we only have two people, and we have some really good tiles, so it's not really going to make it. I don't think any of them can be worked because of food, so it's not really worth it at this point. I'll just get a harbour. The five gold harbour. There we go. That's the best bonus we could possibly hope for. Uh, there we go. Do some damage to that musketman. Keep these trade routes going. Lovely. Good, good, good. Okay, I'm liking this. I'm liking this. I completely forgot about this part of our empire to the north as well. Go on, take down the skirmisher. Oh, oh, good job. This city has some walls. There we go. That's nice. You just. Oh, you could shoot too. There we go. I mean, these units are just going to farm XP. <laughs> and eventually, 
I hope they will clear the encampment, but <laughs> we're not making much progress towards the encampment down here, so it might take a while. It may take a little while just to get down there, but there we go, we've made some ground. If we can get to like here and block them coming up, that would be a good start. But yeah, I mean, if they keep getting some experience, keep getting some promotions, can't complain with that really. And there we go, we got, I think we got a golden age. Is it, actually, I think this is a heroic age. Because we got a golden age in a um, dark age. So yeah, we are in a heroic age. The Zulu and the Khmer do the same as us every time. <laughs> which is always fun. Um, we can pick three, so I don't have to be as perfect in my decisions. I don't think we're going to be settling too many cities. So I'm probably going to skip out on this one and go for these three. So reform the coinage. Traders can't be plundered, and we make three gold for international trade routes. Ten production towards industrial era or later wonders, or ten percent, I should say. Campus districts, science adjacency bonus, give production. We've got some big science adjacency bonuses, so that's great. And then a special case of spell eye. I might use that to be honest. I, I don't really have. I'm not really prepared unit wise to attack someone, but heck, why not? Right? We may as well. I might try use it when there's a few just at the end. You know, I might be ready. Some of these techs are ridiculously quick when you've boosted them. Oh my goodness. It's because our science is quite high. Um, Big Ben, Stock Exchange. I don't really know what I want here. Um, canal. Is there anywhere we could realistically build a useful canal? Like one through here would be... Actually, yeah, saying that. One through here would be cool. But obviously that's going to take a lot of time and money <laughs> to sort the tiles out. But yeah, through this strip of land would be kind of cool. Um, anywhere else, I feel like it's too thick, right? I don't, I don't think we should build one here. Like that's while well, the mountains make it impossible. The only other option is like round this city, which again, don't doesn't really make too much sense, or isn't really necessary. So um, we're gonna go, we're gonna go economics first, and let's get a workshop in Adelaide. How are you only still at seven? I feel like you've had this, we've had this city for a while. Still only at seven population. Industrial zone is available. How are we doing? Let's let's do this properly. Let's have a look at what every city needs. Launston here. Amenities zero, but lots of housing. You also have a production available right now. Wait. Oh no, it, that was this city I was just choosing for. That was me being silly. Harbour. Anything plus three gold. Industrial zone. All plus all plus three. There we go. Build that there. I'll help this city out. Um. This city is lacking amenities, so I'm, oh, we do need the monument though, so we'll get that first. And then we might get the factory. 28 gold now for this one. This has now gone up to 7 sites and 7 culture. Decisions. <laughs> Decisions. I really want, when is the next, we must be near the next governments. Right? Uh, right. I'm not going, okay, no, they're still, still a way down the line, but... Whatever, whatever. Yeah, we'll get the monument. Just that extra one culture we should have been getting for a lot, a lot earlier. But never mind. Townsville will increase a little bit. Some more era score. Yeah, we 130 is going to be a challenge. That's for sure. For the next to avoid a dark age again, could be tough. But clearing this barb camp will be a start. There is planes. I mean, yeah, we are flying through the text. Quick speed was a mistake. I know it works really well for TSL games. I think I messed up using it today. There we go. We'll get the consulate in Newcastle. It feels like we've not got a governor title for a long time. Two got double adjacency bonuses from commercial hubs and harbours. I don't think Adelaide has either of those. Um, no. So, just build. We'll, we'll, build, we'll pick something else. Okay, get that one. Then that's all we have, yep. Uh, governor title, nope, not government. Governors, promotion, we will take the gold from unimproved, because I believe there's a lot of unimproved, yeah, all these tiles look, all these four forest tiles, um, and some of these I think maybe, getting some gold as well, and all of a sudden we have a thousand, we have so much money, where did that come from? <laughs> that just, I think the trade routes have just hit that point where they get really more valuable. That would make sense, I think, because we just made a ton of gold. I thought this city was immune to flood damage. Oh, it is. It is. It's fine. Phew. <laughs> I was getting confused then. All right, Canberra. Just protect the campus. And uh, stock exchange. Yep. 
Uh, how do we do this? I was going to say, should we go on like a naval boat mission, just conquering every capital, but I've realized most of the capitals are not in the water. Um, <laughs> so that wouldn't work. And also, obviously, like I said, the map is shaped, it is a weird Pangea map where it sort of touches all four corners. It's more like an X. So it comes down to like here, and then back up here, <laughs> then back again up here. So a weird shaped X. But it connects with the bottom on all four corners of the continent. So there's no way into the inland seas. So that's not really worth it. Um, it is very weird. It looks like there's another ocean in the middle. It looks like, yeah, it's kind of, I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of like a square with a sea in the middle and then some bits that go off to the side like X's. So there's a lot of very weird shapes going on on this Pangea map. Where even was that? Very confused. What city was that? I think it was this one. Uh, you only just got a governor title, but you know, we'll, we'll take another one and a bit more gold. And as I said, I'm going to spend some money. I've got probably got some units that need need upgrading. Here we go. Barb clamp. Clamp? Camp. <laughs> Cleared. Anything that could be upgraded. Siege towers. can. Are they just stuck as siege towers forever? Spearmen can be upgraded. Why is you is you not upgrade anymore? Okay. Trebuchet upgrade to bombard. See, there we go. This is a lot better. Why do we still have a warrior? Up to a line infantry. Crossbowmen can be upgraded. Okay, that's all our money. But that definitely improved our military quite a bit. I think I don't even know who to attack. Like, there's nowhere... Obvious, do you know what I mean? The walk to the Zulu's quite an awkward and far one. Um, the Khmer's pretty awkwardly located as well to get to because of the city states. So that's it's just wherever we go, we are gonna probably need to use boats. Lots of boats for the Khmer, but again it's then we've got to get them onto this side. Like it's not possible, so it's a very weird and awkward very weird map shape has put us in a weird position here. We're gonna probably have a very peaceful Passive game, try and win on science. Um, at the moment, how are we looking? Fifth in population, okay. Number one in soldiers, third in crop yield, biggest economy, third in land, first in goods. That's good. I'm gonna have a look at the graphs. That's one of the things you can do in these smaller games. You can actually somewhat get some information out of the graphs. Um, which one are we? Just that's us. We're not doing too good. Just flash in there, down here, sort of tied with. Who's, let's try and figure out which cut. So we're sort of tied with the Zulu. Who is this at the bottom? That is Coupe of the Maori. And is that Scotland? Okay, well, we're not near Scotland, but the Maori and Scotland are not doing great. Biggest population is the Khmer to our north, and theirs is really shot up. Look, it was it was, um, it was was Indonesia for a long time, and then theirs sort of stopped, and then it, it shot up again. But I think this purple line out of nowhere taking the lead and then the Gauls as well even more dramatic rise and who is this in blue Norway lost a few people here but have climbed again <clears throat> and we've just sort of gradually moved on we're sort of maybe we're next yeah we're following the sort of path of these other really big shooting up lines but we've definitely slowed compared to we sort of started rising at the same time as the Gauls, but we have not matched. Yeah, they overtook us. They were below us, and then they shot past. Okay, soldiers-wise, where are we? I think we've just climbed to the top. Yeah, you can see. I don't know why we dropped and then climbed. I have no idea. We didn't lose anything. But either way, we've just climbed into the lead with those promotions and upgrades. The Gauls also fell down a little bit. That's Norway then in third. Then it is Scotland. Then it's a bit of a mess, which involves the Maori, the Khmer, and I think the Zulu are hidden right at the back there. You can't really see the line, but it sort of ends about here as well. So they're all very similar. And then I believe that is Indonesia in last place. Crop yield, is that us in... That's not us in first. Where are we? I think we were 30. Yeah, we're this green line, but ours is increasing. Uh, where the rest are sort of stagnating. Economy, ours has just shot up, yeah, recently. I don't know why. It was already shooting up, and now it's just skyrocketed. So that's great. I mean, some others have as well, but not as much, which is cool. I don't know if that's because we're friends with everyone or what. Land area, there you are. We're still climbing. Um, I haven't settled for a while, so I guess this is just border growth. You can see the Khmer 
going past us quite exponentially. Maybe they settled some cities. And then goods, we have again also very recently shot up from the middle. Of, yeah, we look here, we were miles behind. And now, boom, all of a sudden, we're miles ahead. So our production's gone up. That's good, right? Let's find, I mean, I say find oil. We can already see oil. So actually, let's not do that. Because we only. I can only see one, which is very concerning strategically. I can only see one source. Uh, not just like, oh no, there's one down here. We might need to s settle down here in the snow just to get some more oil. But I'll get artillery unlocked because that is my favorite unit. It just makes life so much easier. If we are going to attack somebody, I want to get get that as early as possible. Um, Scotland just said something about keeping peace with neighbors. I, I have no idea. He looks like he's getting killed though. Oh, some new options here. So this would now give me colonial taxes, 14.2 production and 19.6. Of course, our empire, I didn't think this policy card would make, or the other, the colonial officers policy card would make much use. Obviously, we saw it would improve loyalty, but we were doing fine for loyalty. But this one, obviously, we've not, it doesn't look like we're on two different continents, but our empire is essentially split between two because I my capital is like near the border of two. So it's not really colonizing as such, but you know, I just, where my empire is in the game is two different continents. So half our empire would benefit from this and get an extra 14 production and 19 gold. I'm going to stick with the science. I don't know, maybe I'm overvaluing the science. We could also get 28 gold and 7 faith from this policy card. There's also 4 food, 4 production, 4 gold, 4 science, four, loads of stuff if I was to get rid of this. I think my great scientist's efforts have been good so far. I mean, we're not actually going to get this one. I might switch it out. I might I might switch it. We've been pretty aggressive towards those. What great people races are we leading? So great general, we're not on top. I mean, you have to fight wars, really. So that makes sense. Great admiral, we're also not doing too great. Um, great engineer, we are in first place, um, which is cool. From building districts and buildings. Yeah, that's probably why. We're just about, by point two ahead on the great merchant race. Although we'd actually be able to buy this with gold. But um, there you go, we'll just hold back. All the great prophets obviously gone. I haven't actually looked at whose religions are what. We're not doing so well in the scientist or the writer races. Yeah, we don't have much culture, so that makes sense. You know what, I'm thinking, why not? Let's try it. You know, we can go back if it's not working out for us. We can always go back. So let's get rid of these great scientist points. I'm going to put this one in. It is one to all yields for each government plaza building, diplomatic quarter building, and palace in a city. So it's all going to Canberra, which is still pretty useful for that city. I have literally no idea what to choose here. Two envoys or one governor title. That's what I'm basing it on, not the other stuff. Although zoos are cool. We'll get them. We don't need them desperately. Right, Newcastle. I said I was struggling for culture, so I can't really complain and then just get away with it. So I'm going to go ahead and slap that down. Can I buy this oil? I can't, thank you. I'll do that while we're here. I don't really want this bonus one faith, but I will take some more science here for the universities and consulates. Let's get this one up to three as well. Oh no, we can't. Dang it. Okay, we'll, we'll do that next. That's the next step. And I also want to upgrade this trebuchet once I have the money. Turn it into a bombard, or it'll be artillery if I wait a few more turns, so I may as well just wait up for that to come through. More districts on the way. The only problem with heroic ages is that none of the none of the dedications are linked to giving you more era score. So we could really do with the Taj Mahal helping us out. Coal power plant. You know what, Canberra, I'm only going to do it in the capital this game. I'm, I've had some games where I've tried to avoid climate change completely. I've had some where I've gone, you know, and just said, screw it, we can cope, <laughs> we'll go with it, which seems to be real world, real world approach for some. Um, I can't say if I'm from the UK, we're pretty bad at it. Um, for a very, for a small country as well, we're not like the biggest place. We're pretty bad, so apologies there. Let's not worry about that. I'm sure we'll figure something out. Patala Palace. One diplomatic policy slot and victory point. 20 turns. Um, 
This isn't where I was necessarily planning to build this. I just want to see if I can build it quicker and some. But, so I could build it here. 19 turns in Sydney is not really a difference. In Canberra, it is not available. Yeah, I'm going to give it a go, to be honest. I can put that production. I'm going to, I might put that policy card in. Should I stick it here or here? Problem is, both of these tiles are giving some of the production that would have helped. But there we go. We'll build it here. Now it's going to take 21. But yeah, will it? It won't let me change this turn, will it? View policies. Unlock for 320. Okay, I'll, I'll wait. It's not an issue. There we go. We get that boost from Cahokia. We're the suzerain of these three. I want to be the suzerain of Taruga. And I normally, someone else is just keeps one up in us. But there we go. Things are looking good. We're getting exciting. We're getting two more wonders. Three era score. There we go for a new theatre square. Not sure why exactly. I think it's because it's when you get the plus three adjacency modes. We do get that Greg Merchant. Another one. We've had a lot of these to be fair. I don't know which one that what this person is going to do. Giovanni de Medici. Instantly build a bank and a market. Okay. I need to send you somewhere. I think we have banks and markets in all of them. So I might need to save this until we get a new one. But I'll need to remember to do that like straight away because if not I will just forget. <laughs> but there we go. That will be it for this episode. So as always if you have enjoyed be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe as well if you are new to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.